Jo, 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 jo. Everybody, welcome to the second city of the Czech Republic. This is Brno. One of the tourist attractions in the city is the Astronomic Clock. It releases a glass marble every day. It's 11 in the morning, which commemorates the victory after a 30-year war over the Swedes. However, if you want to know the current time, you might find that conventional clocks may serve you better. This is a city of architectural contrasts, old buildings and new designs. It's also a city with plenty in the way of exercise and entertainment options. One of them is the Automotodrome Brno. We're here at the Automotodrome uh, Brno for the third round of our 24-hour series European Championship 2019 in the beautiful forests of the Moravian Czech Republic. And uh, we're looking forward to a, to a good event here. Those drivers who aren't familiar with the track yet are pleasantly surprised. Oh yeah, it's mega being here and especially with all the good weather we've been having, it's a uh... Hopefully it's not as hot when the race is happening because the car does get quite hot, but yeah, and the track, it's, it's an unbelievable track, so it's great to be here. In the run-up to the race, it's not been sunshine all the way. A little rainfall because of the number 11 Ferrari to crash during free practice. I touched the curbs outside and I spun and as you can see, uh, I hit the wall with the rear but it looks like disaster, but it's not so much. So the guys will repair the car till the evening, and I hope so it was the last bad luck this weekend. The race is in two parts. The first quarter is on Friday, the rest on Saturday. Friday, the first qualifying for the cars in the TCE series. Yeah, quality went really well. Uh, my dad went out first and set a really nice time and uh, gave me the tyres, which are a bit old. We've been running on a bit of old rubber and uh, I managed to set a mega lap and it was the best the car would do. The A3 pole goes to Bruno first-timers, Synchro Motorsport. It's more complicated than I thought. The circuits you know, is quite complex. There's a section, you know, I think it's maybe sector two and some of sector three is a lot more complicated than we thought. So there's a bit to learn in there and it all seems to be about exit speed rather than entry speed. Best time in the TCR class and claiming pole in the touring car division, therefore, the number 101 Cupra from Red Cam Jordans.nl. Uh, setup is really important on this track. It's quite a long track and a uh, long corner, so if you don't have enough front grip with the front wheel drive cars, we are really struggling. So uh, we managed to do pretty well and uh, we are really happy to be on pole. Others not that happy that the number 101 was on pole and swapped around the position boards. In the GT division, the number 11 Ferrari, which had been crashed, was put back together in plenty of time to join in the qualifying. All in the 991 Porsche class was taken by the number 912 from Porsche Lorient. Uh, it was uh, very good because uh, we, we take the pole position for the category. And uh, we are 10 in, uh, in the general, so it's uh, quite good. In GT4, it's a pole position for local team RTR projects, even though they claim to have an unfair advantage. I've driven here probably thousands and thousands of laps, you know, in my career, so I know the circuit perfectly. I know how to how to get the best out of out of the track and also best out of this car because I actually uh, was developing this car when once it was sold. It. First in A6 Pro and second overall, the number eight from Olymp Racing. Uh, of course, I could improve, but uh, anyway, uh, we had a pole in uh, R6 uh, Pro class and uh, second overall, so we are happy about it. And at the front of the GT field, the number 88 from Car Collection Motorsport. It was not easy, I have to say, because it's really, really low grip uh, since we are uh, here. And uh, so it made it not easy uh, to put all three sectors together, but it was still enough for pole position. With the warm-up laps underway, what are people expecting? 
I think this race for us will be a race uh, driving, driving, driving and expecting to not have problems to have a good result. Uh, we will see. The, the Expos are um, pretty fast. So they, they are too strong. Uh, I guess uh, the BOP is more to them. So maybe we can, we can go to the podium, but uh, it will be hard. It will be a really hard race. Yeah, the, I think the expectations uh, will be really high. So we hope that we will make a good pace and uh, yeah, we hope for a good grip. <laughs> And yeah, let's see what we can do. You have to be careful with the tyres. I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's a race where you have to use the, your brain and not only your uh, right foot. So it's, uh, it's, it, will, it will be, yes, yeah, handicap for us. It will be a tactical race. The two warm up laps are nearly over and we're waiting for the battles to commence. We weren't expecting to see that battling before the green flag. I was shocked because uh, I was driving straight and suddenly. Uh, I heard, uh, I felt that uh, he, he hit me twice or three times and I was unshocked because I, I didn't expect it. Uh, you have to ask the other guy because uh, I, was, I was in my, my, my position and he came to me and, and knocked my car. I said, okay, let's say hello to each other, which is shit. Stupid, stupid stuff, but uh, okay, nothing happened. So let's, uh, let's focus on the race. It's a long distance race, so we should not battle uh, uh, before the start. Yeah, they were running into each other and stuff. It's uh, It was fun to watch, I can tell you that, but uh, we'll see how they do by the end. With the drivers now finished playing bumper cars, competitors are lined up to start the 12 hours of Brno. With the numbers 8 and 88 still paying far too much attention to each other and not the rest of the field, that allows the numbers 34 and 11 to attack the leaders. Uh, I started from fourth position and uh, go in the first car now in the first place. Um, yeah, and I'm not really sure if it was a, if it was a jump start because I think I overtook him on the after line, but I think they can uh, see it on the on the monitors better than me. And Pretty clear that he was at the start line before the number 88 that started in second place. Meanwhile, the number 11, Czech entered Ferrari, pushes through. Yeah, I was second because also the the Audi in the side of me was good. Uh, but uh, I tried to overtake him uh, in the mid sector and was fine. And then I, I tried to, to do my pace and then was, was good. Just half a lap completed. Lots of action already in the GT series. And with the second place car off track, the TCE series joins in to the Hankook 12 hours of Brno. The Abba Commercials BMW SP3 car competing amidst the TCRs, but can't quite get in a position. Meanwhile, others trail behind the TCRs. The start was good. It was, um, again, it was quite quiet. You know, we're used to sort of seeing maybe 60, 70 cars out there. So we're just hanging on to the back of the TCR cars. But as soon as they start to spread out, they're pulling away from us. So um, we were able to lead our class and, get, and continue to lead it during that. So yeah, it was, it was fairly uninventful, which is kind of nice. In the GT series, the number 85 AMG of CP Racing is fighting for a position. I don't know if we touched. It was close, though. Oh, yeah, when I went around him on the inside, yeah, I don't think we touched. I didn't feel it anyway. Yeah, you know, we, we had a good run on him, and then, um, yeah, I got inside him in one, and then he kind of got away, and then I got him back down into two again. So, And then it was, I think, okay. It didn't seem, uh, didn't seem bad from my point of view. It's always nice to have a good start to the race, but that means nothing if your car then fails on you. I started, really good start, everything went great, just my dash wasn't working, my dashboard wasn't working. But then I think it was in the third lap, I felt something in the car that something is not completely right. Um, but I didn't think it is something major, so I continued driving a bit slower, but still I continued driving and at least wanted to go back to the box. But yeah, on the way back to the box, the, the engine blew up. And now we're just trying to, to build in a new engine to start tomorrow again. Short code 60 required to get the BMW 666 safely off the track. Once we're back to green, the drivers are starting to push their cars to the limits again. Already the TCE and GT series mixed throughout the field. And that makes things a lot different. I could not stay with the Herbert Porsche uh, because of the traffic. Traffic. All those people take care, but here and there, if, if you if you catch traffic in the wrong the wrong corner, you lose too much uh, space. But uh, it's okay, okay. Two KTM crossbows in the field. 
Gabriela Yilkova in the RTR 226 trying to gain positions. Every each lap I was trying to catch the other cars and I was trying to go just uh, in, in front and uh, then came the problem with the gearbox. So uh, I have to go back to the, to the pits and uh, the team was trying to, to repair the, the gearbox and then we went back on the track and uh, actually after a couple of laps uh, happened the same. Then we have to go back to the to the pits and repair the gearbox again. So um, yeah, that, that, that was that was the start. <laughs> Drivers are noticing just how hard this track is on tyre wear. Had a, a okay speed in the beginning, but this track it's very very hot to the tyres. So after 45 minutes, something like that, we started to have problem with the tyres. But if you have a driver who knows the track. He also knows how to handle the car here. It's here now, you are faster if you are going slower. It's uh, strange to, to say, but you need to drive really slowly with the brakes and with the throttle because the, the, the grip is not ideal. This is the third time that the Hankook Powered 24 hour series has been here at Bruno. We raced here in 2015 and 2016. And this weekend, the race is in two parts. Three hours of racing today, and the first hour of that is now complete. This is endurance. For me, endurance is uh, a teamwork. It's not about how fast you are. It's not about how fast your uh, partners are. It's about a teamwork. It's about uh, good uh, cooperation between all of the parts of the team. The Hankook 24-hour series is racing at the Brno Automotodrome. It calls itself the Czech Adrenaline Factory, and rightfully so. This track, I think, has everything. It has high-speed corners, uh, technical corners, uh, a long straight. Um, yes, it's a various of everything. So I think that makes it uh, special for this race. Actually, the racetrack is pretty wide. So you have many possible lines uh, where you can drive. And uh, not all of them are slow. So you can choose many uh, different lines in actually, I would say, more than half of the corners which are on the racetrack. When you are new on the racetrack and you don't know all the corners, you have really many possibilities. That's why the Brno is so special. Uh, we know the track, of course, and uh, there are some tricky places which we know more much better than other drivers and uh, yes it's a domestic track with some advantage for us uh, the way of uh, of uh, style of driving on this track is just you need time to to, to learn it uh, i would probably i would probably uh, can explain it corner by corner but it, we're gonna stay here for a long time it's really difficult because you can't brake so hard so you have to drive really smooth and yeah, it's it's not so easy. But uh, on the race simulator, it looks uh, very easy, but in reality, it's it's uh, it's really difficult. It's very technical. Uh, it's not a fast circuit. Yeah, it's quite it's quite difficult. This circuit was founded in 1987, but the history of the Bruno circuit is going way back. It was in the 30s of the uh, last century. In those days, the Bruno track was called the Masaryk circuit after the first president of then Czechoslovakia. The old circuit wound its way through the villages around Brno. The old pit lane and buildings are still there on the road that brings you in to the new permanent circuit. Back to the here and now, Sam Neary has pulled into the pit garage as the TC race leader, but there's drama here. This is not a planned pit stop. Richard has been in the car and has found the same issue. Uh, so basically what's wrong is the down paddle shift has failed. So it's just, as soon as he's come in the pit lane, it's just kept selecting down, then down, and then down, till eventually it's selected reverse, because it's the last downward gear, and then we couldn't get it out of reverse. And here's another TCE division car that's going to start losing positions. We, uh, we broke uh, the rear suspension. We have just taken the, the turn, turn one and two, and go, going at uh, turn three, and suddenly, it just break just before turn turn four it, we are going straight with yeah 160 something like that and then it breaks and uh, i can't i can't control the cars i have to go just straight into the gravel 
So after about an hour and a half of racing, cars need to top up with fuel and stick on a new set of Hankook tyres. You want this to be done as quickly as possible, but sometimes you can try and work too quickly. Yeah, we had a penalty due to the speeding in the fueling area. Um, it's very difficult because it's going up and down, so you have to even to brake in the fueling area to, uh, to not hit the 20 km per hour margin. The number 226 has been in the garage for over half an hour. They're getting ready to rejoin the race, but for how long? We're not 100% sure now. Uh, we don't know yet what, what, what was the problem. Uh, they were trying to just save it some, somehow, and we will see maybe uh, after today uh, what, what was the main problem. But now the car is working, it's shifting, so I hope uh, it will it will least till till the end. The team ABBA commercial mechanics have located the issue with shifting their gears. Yeah, we got into the pit box and we thought it was the actuator valves had failed. So we stripped the actuator valves, we plugged the computer in, it wasn't the valves. Eventually we managed to find what it was and it was the micro switch on the steering wheel. Not just struggling mechanics, the race is hard for drivers too. Normally we should go like maybe to five and uh, with the new tyres, maybe 202, 201, but that was two years ago. So today you see the, the race race really slow. As a result, Synchro is changing their geometry setup on their Honda Civic. We're finding the tyre wear is quite extreme. Uh, we're worried that you know, an hour and a half to the two hours, we're not going to get that life. The tyres on the first stint were already through to the canvas, so really by making this geometry change, it should allow us now to make the tyres last the two hours and not have any worries of punctures or blowouts out on track. Coming to the end of the first part of this race, more troubles for the number 226, Crossport, and the team will need to work on the car overnight. The last lap of this segment has started, not everybody will get to the end of the lap unscathed. A few corners before the chequered flag, uh, I was coming around the, the sort of complex around the back of the track and, and obviously got a, an impact on the right rear wheel from a, a Porsche, one of Herbert Porsches going through. I felt a, little, a small accident. Uh, somebody uh, closed me the, the core from on the. Yeah, on my, my split is, uh, is a little bit damaged. Yeah. The 334 BMW will need to be worked on overnight. That's a 10 lap penalty. While the 91 Porsche from Herbert did continue. In the meantime, the TCE's battle towards the finish flag, and it's close. Yeah, well, we were, we were driving uh, very near to each other. So uh, it's fun if, if uh, DCR uh, class number one and number two are what? Two, three seconds uh, behind? Yeah, we did go in, uh, in the same lap in the pits, I think, to the yes. fueling and stuff. So, and then we did go out, and then we saw each other, and I was like, go, but I had to save the tyres for tomorrow. So uh, it was difficult, but uh, we made it, and uh, I got, same, I got the same message here yeah, from the manager. Save the tyres, don't, don't fight with brokers. <laughs> we still have nine hours to go. There's a bigger gap in the GT division. Number 11, Ferrari from Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha is the first cart across the finish line after the first three hours of racing. Josef Kral is very content with what the team has achieved so far. I have to be, I am, I have to say also, but you know, the race is still long, it's great to be first, but we have still nine hours left, which is a lot, so that's why I'm not cheering up, because you never know what may happen. We'll catch up with some of the other drivers in a moment, but let's have a look first at the standings after the Friday part of this race. The Czech Ferrari team has a 40 second gap to the rest of the field, but at the end of this first three hours, only full lap differences remain. So the top four will start in that order with basically no gaps between them on the grid on Saturday. So the battle will recommence with the number 88 from Car Collection in second, the 22 Wockenspiegel Ferrari in third, and the Porsche number 91 from Herbert in fourth. In the TC division, the top three are also on the lead lap. It'll be the 101 Red Camel that'll start on pole position, NKPP number 175 in second, and the number 12 from Autorama, the VW Golf, in third. The cars are in Park Fermi. That means they can't be touched overnight. So let's ask some of the other drivers to reflect on their race. It was good. <laughs> I'm quite tired. Well, it was a very good day. Hopefully tomorrow again. My last stint was very good. I think now we're in the 911 class. I think that we P2. Huh? When I start my stint, we were P4. 
for me is the okay. Carl's working all right, but I think we're suffering at the front end like everyone else is, struggling for grip. But um, you've decided to go a little bit of a shorter stint today because it doesn't matter losing a bit of time tonight because obviously it's just the net lap. So worked in our favourite spa. Hopefully it will do the same here. It was a lot of fun. It's a little bit like racing in the rain. It's just really slick. I don't know why it's so slippery out there, but, uh, you know, we were, it was a lot of car control, so a lot of work, but, you know, that's fun too. So I changed tire like 50 minutes before the end, so I had a really good stint. Uh, I think the, uh, the tire's degradation was not that bad that I thought from the beginning, so it was quite okay. So if I'm not wrong, we finished fourth in class, so uh, and we're on the same lap as third and second. Uh, so I think, yeah, podium is well in reach for us. Welcome to Saturday morning. Last night, all the cars were moved to their starting positions for today. And now we're getting ready to start the remainder of the race. Yesterday we had three hours, so that means today we have nine hours to go. Um, four cars stayed in the pit lane last night, or actually in the pit box last night. They are now back on the start grid with a penalty from uh, 10 laps, but they are ready to go. Yes, we, we work uh, a bit hard because uh, we got um, an accident uh, yesterday, just uh, 15 minutes uh, before the end of the race. And so we, we make it, like uh, it's raining today, so it's, it's good. That was just a front, so. The uh, car is uh, now okay, uh, mechanics uh, uh, made uh, good work by night and the uh, car is now in good condition. It's going to be a tough day today, um, eight hours of racing. Um, yeah, hope we can enjoy it, uh, enjoy it. We had a small incident um, yesterday in the last lap. So yeah, hopefully this car is running well. I don't know it yet. I can tell you after this first stint. 10 o'clock Saturday morning, the grid is all lined up. It's time for the GT Endurance Series to restart the 12 hours of Renault. Two by two grid of GT cars have fanned out as they head down towards the first corner. The poor sitting Ferrari from Bohemia Energy Team is the first to claim the lead in this second part of the race. That's not an easy task for anyone here. Yeah, uh, we had uh, older tyres than, than our competitors because we stopped yesterday 20 minutes before. And we have more fuel and the old tyres, so the car was, really, was lower. And also maybe with cool temperature, we are uh, a bit lower than the Porsche. Lots going on behind the GT race leader. And we're expecting some action too as we restart the Touring Car Endurance Series 12 hours of Brno. Lestrup team started from fourth and gets passed on both sides by the 107 and 188. They started from fifth and sixth, leading the orange Cupra of Red Camel. Yeah, I think if you're a pole, you always have an advantage at the start. And uh, we took this advantage, and uh, that's why we kept our P1 uh, in the first lap. The 85 AMG started today a lap behind the top four. They're not so much fighting their way forward as calculating, planning and scheming it. I think we're still a little bit behind, behind the curve on the fueling. We lost a little bit yesterday on one of the stops. And, and we were a little bit, frankly, a little bit slow yesterday afternoon uh, learning the track. But we're running good times today. We're fighting our way in there. So hopefully it, uh, it works the magic. They say there's nothing as ingenious as mankind. And surely the most ingenious of us all are race mechanics. When they need to operate on a scalding hot engine, they have a sleeve to make sure that they can get their work done. I see uh, exhaust pipe was broken in half, at half. And I put on and I get uh, it. Screwed, four, sc four screwed, go on, new exhaust pipe, but that's all. Charles Espenlab in the CP Racing number 85 AMG GT is battling with the Bohemia Energy number 11, trying to get his lap back, but he's about to incur a penalty with which he does not agree. I think it's just too subjective to whoever they're relying on for these corner control. I'm behind the 11 car. Same exact line, use the same amount of track, and he doesn't get a penalty and I get the penalty. So there, there's some, it's too subjective. So I hope they look into that a little bit and try to make that more fair. As broadcasters, we're nothing more than spectators, but we can see that the number 11 Ferrari just kept two of his wheels on the white line, while the number 85 AMG just crosses it. That would suggest the penalty was correctly applied. For now, he has passed the Ferrari.
Track temperature rising, sunny weather in the Czech Republic is quite enjoyable. It's okay, it's okay. There were, I drive already races that was quite hotter. Uh, I like to drive when it's sunny. Hope uh, we'll stay like that. Driving for nearly two hours straight is really pushing the Hankook tyres on this demanding track. The car felt a lot different towards the end of the stint, but it was it was quite tough because you need, really need to save the tyres, but at the same time you, you want to do a good lap time. So uh, it's hard for everyone and it's, I think it's just a game of who can save the tyres the best and who has the best strategy towards the end of the race. Managing tyres here crucially important. The brakes also working very hard. The 22 Wackenspiegel Ferrari in for a new set of brake parts. This of course will cost them a little time, but they have the knowledge that most of their competitors will need to do at least one change as well. No certainty to the final results just yet. Still seven more hours to race. This is endurance. I don't get to race very often, so I do endurance racing because you it is a massive challenge. Uh, mentally, physically, uh, from a skills perspective, I have to learn how to be a racing driver every time I go racing. And uh, so, yeah, it's all about the challenge and, and challenging yourself and competing with other people who are good at what they do. And uh, for me, that's, that's what it's all about. In the Corentic Hankook 24-hour series, there's a distinction between gentlemen drivers and professional drivers. There's no such distinction for the mechanics, and they are one of the most important ingredients in any form of motorsport. This team is so experienced. They do the blank paint, they do uh, with us a uh, 24-hour Nürburgring with two cars, and Rinaldi Racing is, um, yeah, I think one of the best Ferrari teams you can have here in Europe. So where do teams find mechanics like that? The motorsport business is a big family, so you know a lot of guys and you ask a lot of guys to, to come to your team. And uh, the family grew uh, over, I think the team is now more than 20 or 30 years old. So that's why we stay together. Uh, those guys are, uh, let's say, from the environment of motorsport. So uh, let's say through the years, picking up uh, really best ones on the market. It's hard work being a mechanic during the race and beforehand during the preparation time. We prepare the car in our uh, workstation and then we come to here and then we make a setup and then we hope that the drivers at, uh, likes the car and then we have a little change on it and then we must go. What I have to do? Oh, to prepare the cars, um, do boxing stops, clean tires. <laughs> Uh, and fix the car when he uh, has an accident. For some, just being able to work in motorsport is a reward in itself. Yes, uh, because this, my, this is my dream and I live, I live in motorsport. This is a job where you have to love working on the car. You're sitting waiting for a crash to happen. No, no. Crash is not good. You want to finish. And um, if there's a crash, uh, yeah, we have to repair as, as soon as possible. But yeah, it, you don't want to crash. And of course, if all goes well, it's a lovely weekend at a racetrack. Yes, absolutely. We, we sleep all here on the, in the paddock, most of the team mates. And in the evening, we sit together, have a beer together. It's very nice, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Most importantly, the mechanics have the total respect of their teammates. To be fair, they're a good team. They work hard, lots of hours after work as well. They're... It's a passion. It's good. In qualifying, the QSR 454 Mercedes were at the back of the GT4 class with a five-second gap between themselves and the pole sitter. They were determined to improve their position in the race, but on this, the second day of racing, their situation has not improved. Yes, we changed the setup after the, the, the qualifying, but it was wrong. We tried it, we tried it, uh, we did it, but it was uh, uh, not so good a decision. But you don't always have to be in the lead to enjoy the race. It was very good. I was quite happy out there. It was a lot of traffic, but on the end I did a, did a stint without mistake, so I'm happy with that, yeah. Meanwhile, in the garage, the Wackenspiegel Ferrari number 22. 
Um, yeah, I mean, we had uh, a, a bit high temperature in the beginning of the stint, uh, or in the beginning this morning. Then we, we tried to fix something and uh, we go out for around one hour for my stint. And it the temperature becomes higher and higher and now we stopped the car. And there'll be no return to the Bruneau track today. The 85 AMG GT3 currently running third overall. Love to finish first, but it's not something that they have to achieve at all costs. Well, as always, we set our goal to, to finish well in the points on the podium. So if we get there, a lot of times we say, darn, we could have won this race if only we'd have done this or done that. But uh, if, if we meet those goals uh, like we did last year, it worked out really good for the championship. Back in the lead after the pit stop cycle, the Herbeth number 91 Porsche. And the number 107 is fighting to get back to the front of the field in the TCE series. We're close to the front, you know, it's really tight in TCR, it's a really good hard race, uh, all about tyre management, etc, so a um, long way to go, but uh, we're certainly in the mix. It seems most teams are happy with the results so far in this Hancock 12 hours of Bruno. In the moment it looks good, we are happy, the team works good, the car is okay, I think uh, we hope of a podium, we won't see. The 130 Hyundai is in for a pit stop. The team manager is giving the car just a little closer inspection than usual. No, I'm just looking at the car behind the, the gearbox so I can see uh, if it's uh, leaking. And uh, the right, uh, yeah, right uh, rear is uh, the skirt is not uh, because we were out of the sand yesterday. So I have a little bit damaged, so it's kind of difficult to uh, put the tires on. There was some rain in the forecast for today. Looks like a few drops are on their way. And from this vantage point, you can see it's already raining in the distance. And look, Brokers has noticed the first few drops of rain falling. The track conditions are uh, pretty difficult, just as yesterday. It's now raining, so it's now clearing up from the rain. So now Ivo is in the car, my father, he's doing a good job. And uh, my stint was OK. Raining hard enough now for the cars to use their windscreen wipers. We'll take a look at the standings after seven hours of racing completed over two days. At the top of the GT field, the lead is being passed back and forth between the number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari and the 91 Porsche from Herbert Motorsport. At this point, number 11 has a 26 second gap back to the number 91. Two laps further back, the number 88 Audi from Car Collection. There appears to be a lap between the TCE leaders. That's not actually the case. It's just that the GT class leader is racing through the TCE field. So actually, it's really pretty close. 44 seconds only between first and second. The NKPP Racing 175 and the 101 Cupra from Red Camel. The number 110 from Lestrup also on the same TCE lead lap. The current leader in the TC division is the 175 Cupra of NKPP Racing. This, however, is not the same car with which they competed in the earlier races this year. I was well noticed of you. The other one is a Porsche, yeah. <laughs> and this is a Seat. But this, uh, first of all, uh, we had a bit of bad experience in Mugello. Uh, the rear, uh, left rear, uh, exploded, and then Harry went into the wall uh, with 263 kilometers. The Porsche is here at Bruno, though. Uh, this weekend we had the uh, free practice on uh, Thursday, and then we set us an extra chair in the Porsche. And uh, we've uh, Christian Frank Frankenhout ac accompanied us. He is one of the uh, better racers uh, in the whole field. Uh, with a lot of experience with real, real, real uh, uh, powered cars. And uh, he, gave, he gave us instructions how to uh, drive with the uh, Porsche. And in Mugello, uh, we did the same thing. And then Jan van Lage uh, gave us instructions. So with two cars available to them, what are their plans? Portimao will be with the Porsche. Uh, Barcelona, we're still discussing. Uh, whether we go with the Seat or with the uh, Porsche. Then we have the uh, TCR, the 500 miles of uh, Spa will be with the, with the uh, Seat because that's TCR competition. And then uh, Cota is uh, with the Porsche. There are drivers who take it one step further, competing in two cars in the same race. I'm driving on two cars. One is uh, 240 here, and then I go uh, today on the GT4 with the car number 15. 
But as the cars aren't alike, neither is driving them. The cars are totally different, uh, especially the brake system. And the 240, you have help, assistance with the brake system, and the GT4, no. And you have to make uh, lots of uh, pressure on a, on, a, on a leg in a GT4 car. And the braking points are totally different. There's a minimum rest time between stints in any car. So when you're competing in two in the same race, that can be a calculation nightmare. To make it easier for the regulation, uh, I drive on a 240 yesterday. And today I dri just drive the uh, GT4 car. So it's for my brain, for the regulation, for the team calculations, a better way. Wet weather making it very difficult to stay on the circuit. There's a problem with the rear view camera screen for Matteo Malicelli, but he has other things to worry about. Uh, it was really hard because uh, some drop of trains, and again, I like Spa, it's really tight with the Porsche, uh, but we are confident that we are trying to do our best. 112 running third in TCE, Kari Pekalaksonen also staying out on slick tyres. We had just cha changed the tyres and we were on slicks, so we just, you know, fought, fought through the, the rain and the wet a little bit and it, then it actually started to dry very quickly. So it was only like 10-15 minutes, so, so we, we decided not to change any wet tyres. In the TCE lead battle, very important to spend time on the track, not in the pits. I, I drove one hour and 20 minutes, hour, hour and 30 minutes, trying to, just to save my tyres, that to to prolong our stint so that we could go with less stops for the rest of the race, and we managed to do that. The Porsche of Duvo Racing is 10th overall. Their real battle is in the 991 class. Running second in that category, the team aren't entirely certain where they stand against their competition. Yeah, it's difficult because we are not in the same strategy, so we have 30 minutes difference uh, between stopping. So we have to see if in the end uh, we have to stop once more or the other team has to stop once more, and we have like one lap difference. So every half hour it's changing. So should the team start to think about changing their tactics? For the moment we stick to our normal strategy and I think in uh, after one hour, one and a half hour we have to decide if we stick to it or, or if you want to change it. So uh, I'm not quite sure for the moment but uh, I have one driver change now. This is a normal driver change and then we have to see what we do. Still leading the race, the number 11 Ferrari. But the Porsche number 91 is closing in. Daniel Alleman in that car. He's regulating his pace. It was, was a good battle, yeah, it was a good battle, but uh, we have no, no, not pushed, we have, we have, we, we, we drive fast, but not too fast, uh, because the, the tyres are very, very difficult. We uh, save, fu save fuel, look for the, for the tyre, and uh, we wait, we wait for the stand with Robert, Robert will uh, make the last one and a half hour, last well, one hour, 50 minutes, and then we, we start uh, the, the race. Uh. The rubber that's in contact with the road is all important, so it has to be something that can handle this demanding track. A little bit of cloud, I think it helps everybody with the rear grip, and uh, you know the the Hankook tires are hanging in there pretty good, I think, for what we're doing to them. So, still uh, three hours something to go, so we'll see how it is. In short sprint races, drivers are racing to the max. In endurance racing. It's not quite the same, and the drivers will be given clear targets of what is expected from them. I try to maintain the target time that I set by my team manager, so um, he calculate everything and says that we should be on the same pace between two, uh, point 15 to point 18. So for us, it's good. It's not an easy race for anybody. It's just very competitive here today in the TCR class. There's been no code 60s, so there's been no. Uh, advantage gained by anybody, so it's been a really, really hard race. But the race hasn't finished yet. Three more hours of racing to come. This is endurance. For racing, it's a uh, good uh, atmosphere here. Uh, everybody is uh, important for enjoy uh, the race. If, uh, my wife is uh, here from me. It's uh, important for me, and this uh, is the reason why I am enjoy this race. At all the events this year, a race centre is erected in the paddock. This houses the organisation and the catering. We do this in cooperation with the, with the company Isla. Teams can come here for the catering or just to sit and relax or drink a cup of coffee or something else. Um, it's just a place to relax. Um, and as you can see on the, my left side, you can also watch the race. 
This is a big structure, but inside there's a warm, friendly atmosphere. Um, well, we are offering really, really quality hospitality for our customers, you know, for the teams and the races. Um, it's a really comfortable place, as you can see, like at, uh, from the details and from the food and everything what we offer. It's really in the high quality standards. So the people, after really, really long races and really long days, you know, they have like a small corner where can they come, sit, relax, have a couple of drinks, you know, and just enjoy the, the rest of the evening. Uh, the organization ILA does this uh, on many circuits for many organizations and we know that ILA stands for quality. Uh, quality in the accommodation, quality in the food, uh, quality in the service and that's actually also what we want to give to, this, to the team's service. Uh, so this is perfect for us, it's a perfect combination. Um, on a weekend like this, we are preparing every morning fresh and healthy breakfast. Um, then between the breakfast and the meal time, lunch time, we prepare for a really healthy and rich um, lunch. With of course with the offering of the drinks at the bar, and um, afterwards we just in the meal time we are expecting it out for VIP guests and the open guests like we are open hospitality as well to welcome everyone who, who wants to rest a little bit you know just to give them really really good support and uh, like a refreshing corner or in the paddock. Isla's involvement is more than just catering. Everything what we offer, we have like a luxury motorhome. We are supporting the teams with the lunch packages. Um, where we have like we're doing as well with the spare parts with the um, um, BMW and Mercedes. Um, we actually really, really like spend it, spend it everywhere, like in almost every corner of the motorsport as well. And if you love to be near motorsport, Isla is looking for passionate individuals to join their team. The 91 Porsche has now taken its pit stop and instead of leading the race by more than a lap, they're now 38 seconds behind the Czech Ferrari. Uh, hopefully we can close the gap to the Ferrari and then overtake him. Uh, for sure we want to win the race, but it's going to be a really, really hard race. Uh, well, I have to say my team has did a great job so far. Um, I was only doing the start and uh, now the finish. Uh, yeah, the other seven hours of racing. Uh, they, my teammates did a brilliant job, especially in the rain. Ralph Bone was super fast against uh, Malucelli. Um, really nice to, to see on the TV. Um, yeah. A long pit stop for the number 103. The mechanics working on the fiery hot brake parts. CP Racing AMG GT3 number 85 have done their driver change. Joe Foster is the man battling for the team out on track. Pit wall think about their chances in the overall standings. Right now, this is turning into a fuel strategy race for us. Um, the whole team's done a great job. The drivers have stayed out of trouble for what's been a very difficult race. The tire degradation has been really difficult to predict uh, with the weather and the track temp coming up. But we're kind of fighting off the 88 right now. They have Winklehawk in the car, who's extremely quick. Um, they have one stop, we have one stop left. So it's uh, too close to tell, but we're having a good race either way. The Synchro Honda number 676 being pushed into the garage. The driver complaining about vibration. Uh, so we think it's a drive shaft issue. Um, not entirely sure at the moment. Car came in with some uh, vibration on the front left. The guys are taking a look at it. We think it's a drive shaft. This car currently class leader. So we worked it out. We had about 17 to 20 minutes lead on. P2, but hopefully if we can get this out in that time, we'll still keep our lead position. The ABBA 334 BMW is stopped off track. I said on the radio I need to pit as soon as possible because I didn't feel comfortable inside the car with the vibration. So I said pit this lap and then in that lap the, the differential blew up. So it's really unfortunate because we could have got back out if we found out what it was earlier, but uh, that's not meant to be. The Crossport 226 back in the pits with more issues. Their sister car, the number 224, has been running without any problems. So sadly they faced quite a few problems this race. So let's hope that our car stays the one and a half hours clean without any problems and yeah. Having been in the thick of many battles, Tom Black from the 107 Cupra is enjoying his race. I had some good battles today. I managed to have a very good battle with the Aston GT4 earlier and the Merc, the Mercedes GT4. 
Um, there's not a big difference in pace between the two cars. Uh, and then ju I was just had a difficult dip moment, overtaken by a faster car, and missed my braking point into one of the turns and slid into the gravel. So that cost us quite a lot. And Tom can add to his racing CV that he was the cause of the only Code 60 in this part of the race. <laughs> I'm very proud. Yeah, oh, perfect timing, because I was coming into the pits to fit near this in. So that was planned, and the Code 60 occurred, uh, you know, uh, two uh, turns before the uh, pits, so it was perfect timing, perfect timing. Back to green flag racing, trouble for the Mercedes of QSR Racing School. So I led the Ferrari through in, um, in the first class, and then the Audi from what I can see, and it's not easy in the car, but I think it came from about 30 meters back. They had a lock up and it, it sort of hit the back of the car, so spun the car around and we broke a uh, suspension shaft. The car's back on track, it seemed to have been awesome. Uh, what's great about the drivers here, we, we all drive the car the same way, so I think we were set for a great result, but we'll have to plan for Portimao. It's a cracking battle in the 991 class. About an hour to go, there's still a fight going on for the class lead. It was very hard racing, but I know that I was a little bit faster. But then to the end, too, uh, he made li little mistakes, and I was waiting when he goes far that I can go inside and when I passed them uh, I had 100 150 meters and then uh, I know that uh, the winning was was in uh, yes uh, I think uh, that everything will be decided on the last tint and now we are on the same pace so we stop maybe in five minutes difference not more so on we oh, now we are on the similar strategy so Let's see what's happened. I hope that we do everything better than Fid Lauer. <laughs> Another team that wants better performance is the AC Motorsport 188 Audi. My teammate Vincent uh, Redemaker is in. We're in fourth position. And we hope we can get third. We're trying very hard. The gap is about uh, three quarters of a lap. So let's fingers crossed. We have one hour left. We are leading at the moment on, on TCR. So it's been a very close race with everybody this time. So there's been many different teams and cars who have been leading in some point of this race. So very exciting. How much more exciting can it get? In the last Hankook 24-hour series at Spa, the Herbeth Motorsport Porsche needed a splash of fuel to get to the end of the race. That took just too long, and the Bohemia Energy Ferrari went through to win by just eight seconds. This time, the rules are reversed, and it's the Czech Ferrari that needs fuel in the last 15 minutes before the chequered flag. The Herbert Porsche goes through and gets on the lead lap, but the Ferrari is out in time and gets back out on track in the lead. Yeah, like in the spa. <laughs> also with the, uh, with the Renault uh, Porsche. And, but I think Mateo is already tired in the car because he is now over one and a half hour in the car. So I think he would like also to stop it's the final lap, but the number 188 Audi will not see the checkered flag. Uh, the car was at the last uh, last uh, lap, and uh, we are at the turn five. The, the, the brake was um, out, and, uh, the, the brake pads, and the pistons go out, and uh, the oil uh, go outside, and there are no more brakes. Lucky for them, the Creventic series rules see the results decided on the amount of laps completed, so even not crossing the finishing line championship points will still be earned finishing off the final lap of the Hankook 12 hours of Bruno the race leader in the GT division in 2015 the first 12 hours of Bruno Scuderia Praha won the second event here in 2016 was a 12 and a 24 hour race and both of those events were won by Scuderia Praha and now, on the return of the 24-hour series to the Czech Republic, it's once again Scuderia Praha, now known as Bohemia Energy Racing, that claims the 12 hours of Bruno. <music> Top of the TC division, the Autorama Motorsport number 112 VW Golf. They also now lead the European Championship by nine points, with just two more races to come. Podium, the first, second, and third from the GT series. What a close race they had! It was long, really long, uh, but uh, I don't know what the reason. But the last two hours, the car was really good, and the pace was good. No oversteer, and so it was was really funny to drive. 
Mm, again, se only second. I'm not sure if I should be happy or. I don't know. Um, we wanted to win the race, but in the end, we got too many penalties in the end. And yeah, I think we made, we made also a bad um, last pit stop or second last pit stop, so that's the reason why we are not fini uh, finishing first and yeah, have to improve, improve for the next time. Everybody at CP Racing did a great job. My guys down here, see them drinking their celebratory beer, which I need to buy Nathan, my engineer, all the beer tonight because I played a little joke on him about running out of fuel. But yeah, great result with my brothers. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Good job. <laughs> yes, we're very happy. <laughs> and closer still, the battle in the touring car division. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After 12 hours and so close, yeah, it was good. It was good. We raced our own race, and that was it. Rick started to fall back because uh, he probably was too enthusiastic on his on his tires, and then Harry maintained the distance. Uh, yeah, and then you know you're safe. Yeah, I mean we finished P3, so in the end our strategy didn't work out. Uh, we had a few mistakes during the race, but they were really really small mistakes. So I think the level of competitive was was really high in this race. All the TCRs were really close to each other. And uh, we are happy with P3 and uh, congrats to the guys on P1 and P2. Uh, hopefully next race we can be on P1. The final result of the GT Series part of the race shows Bohemia Energy number 11 winning the Hankook 12 hours of Bruno. The final gap to second place Herbeth Motorsport, 1 minute 54 seconds. Three laps ahead of CP Racing's AMG GT3 number 85 in third. In the TCE series, the Autorama Motorsport number 112 Volkswagen in the end extended the lead to a full lap over second place 175 NKPP Cupra. The eight seconds that split them from the number 101 Red Camel in third is the smallest gap between any two cars in any class. And let's look at those other classes. A6 Pro, Bohemia Energy takes the class win. A6 Am, full championship points to the Herb of Motorsport number 91. The 991 class win goes to the number 978 Speed Lover ended car that maintained its lead to the chequered flag. In GT4, it will be the number 224 KTM crossboat team from RTR Project that will be taking the trophy home. TCR podium identical to the TCE division podium with the number 112 Autorama team on the top step. And after a hard fought race, the Synchro 676 Honda team are the winners in the A3 class. If after 12 hours of endurance racing, some gaps are just seconds, we might conclude 12 hours aren't demanding enough. The last two events in Creventic organized series are full and uninterrupted 24 hour races. We start in Portimao on the 5th, 6th and 7th of July. The race will count towards the European Championship and the Championship of the Continents. Be there as a spectator or a competitor. All the information you need is on www.24hseries.com. Joe, but lovely to chat to you. Sorry, thank you.